Hey guys, so today um, I'm still cleaning up, putting things away, but I am going to try out these cards because I told you guys I would try it. Um, only because uh, these cut and emboss folders are interesting in that they're going to cut out some words. They have the embossing, but it's like a full thing already, so it's... It's its own card, basically. Um, but then, you know, how do you kind of decorate that or what do you do? I mean, they added a couple of different little things. So what I want to do is do like a fun card and I'm thinking, actually I should be on here somewhere. Yeah, um, I'm making a card like this one where it has the little sides where it's like a, it's like a dimensional card, you know? So something like that, I think that'd be fun to try out. And then we'll uh, decorate up the front. I know I just got a bunch of the glitter papers in from Crafters Companion, so I'm like, let's try out some of the glitter paper, let's, you know, do something else. Obviously this base, the top one, is probably going to be something that we either have to ink or... I'm not sure on that part yet. I kind of want to do some um, distressing to get this gone, or maybe the gilding wax. I don't know what I want to use on that. So that part we're going to figure it out. So what I'm going to do is get some base paper, get some of this glitter cut down to size, so I don't have to do that during the tutorial. I'll just tell you what the sizes are. Um, maybe some decorative paper. I was kind of thinking, you know how I told you guys the other day, this Summer Breeze paper pad had a paper in here that I think is very Christmas looking, even though it's just flowers, but where am I? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This one. Look how pretty. I love this little paper. So I'm like, maybe I can accent it with some of this paper, um, with that little red and then the little berries. It just seems very Christmassy to me. Maybe it's, maybe I'm way off the mark. I don't know. But, um, I do want to use that. There is some green in here that we could use, but I think I'll stick with this. Um, we'll see. We'll see, uh, if it works out, you know, if it ends up working out with this, um, I will definitely include that. So when I come back, I'm going to have some different things put together, um, pull together my papers. I do want to mention these are probably five by seven. I don't see why they wouldn't be. Uh, just a little smaller than five, so basically it's going to make a five by seven card front and seven, just a little smaller than seven. So let me go ahead and grab some different things. I don't know if I'm going to be using Joy, but um, it's a cute one. Uh, Noel, Faith, some of these have more holes cut out than others, you know, like this one has the whole word cut out, this one has just the J and the Y, and then it's a little embossing on the O. Um, this piece one is the same kind of thing, Noel. So I'll pick also which one we want to use. I do love Holly, you know, I love Holly, but uh, we will see. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I think I have everything I need here. Um, I had to make some notes, but I didn't write down some certain things, so let me try to remember. So my idea is to, like I said, make one of those cards. I guess it's called diorama card or however you want to do it. I do want it to be see-through all the way through to the back of the card. So you're going to need two pieces and my calculations just ended up. Um, I was changing up some numbers and I erased them and I'm like, oh, perfect, because it's uh, 12 inches by 6. So from one 12, uh, you know, 12 inch square uh, scrapbook page or paper, you can make the base of the card. So that worked out so we don't have to waste paper. So. We need two pieces that are both six by 12. And then I am gonna use the Noel one. I was just kind of like, I don't know, I don't know, you know, we'll see what happens, but um, maybe I'll change my mind on that. But what we're gonna do on both of these papers is just bring it over to your scoring board or however you want. And you're gonna score on both ends, one inch and two inches. And the calculation ends up that middle part being not a funky number, but a different number. So it's easier just to do one inch, you know, and then two inch, and then just turn your paper around instead of trying to calculate over. And on this board, anyway, I can't do it anyway because I still have to turn it over. It's only like eight inches wide. One inch and two inches. And you're going to do that same for both papers, okay, for both pages. Now, for the back one with your diorama card, I did cut a background piece from that glitter card. And this is... I should have written these things down. I was going to write on the back of the card and I didn't. Um, eight by, I believe, the six, yeah. So it's eight by six, and I'm gonna mount that on there. Basically, we're gonna stick that down, okay? But we're gonna do that in just a little bit. That's the back one, and that's all you're gonna do for the back. So I'm gonna put that to the side for now. Then for our top of the card, the front of the card, I have a few different things. You can do this however you like. Like, obviously, I just kind of threw this together, and I was debating if I want black paper in this at all, or just white, but black is so pretty, and I might cut this too small now that I look at this, or something's up here. Something is up. It might be this guy. Because um, this is cut at 5 by 7 because we're going to run it through the um, card. But now that I look at it, maybe 5. It looks small. Okay, 5 by 7. So this is what we're going to run through the folder. So I do have it in black, but if you want white, something that you're going to just... Whatever, you know, whatever paper you're going to use, obviously. So it's 5 by 7. And I'm going to relook at this because now this is scaring me because I'm like, oh, that's a little too big. 
maybe that's all. I probably cut this a little bit too big. So basically from five by seven, I want this one to be, um, oh gosh, I'll give you the number in just a minute. I don't want to confuse anybody. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And then I have little pieces that are gonna go on these little side pieces. You can do it on both panels, both tabs that you made, um, you know, one inch and two inch. But this is basically a little glitter piece that is, um, from this is one inch by six. So this is, uh, I believe three quarter, oopsie, three quarter inch by five and three quarters, three quarters by five and three quarters. And then the one that's on top of that is one and a half by five and a half. This is a very small piece of paper. Okay. So, uh, for both sides, you're going to need those same measurements. I'm going to put these to the side for now. So basically we're going to cut through our black piece. Um, okay, I was, I was gonna on try to explain this without confusing people. So I am gonna leave the piece of paper, this one, just as large as it is, uh, only because this has to be five by seven. You can't get it in the folder any bigger. I mean, it can stick out the sides, but then it's gonna be crooked, right? So this has to be five by seven. The, uh, this other piece that's right inside of that is, um, I should have just remembered this, <laughs> seven and three quarters, probably by, five and three quarters as I thought. So seven three quarters by five and three quarters, this matted paper. So what we're gonna do is run this through, but so you can see through it and see through this to the back of the, you know, that little pretty red paper, we have to cut an aperture out of this, okay? Now you can do that with like a rectangle die if you have one, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna cut it out like fussy cut, but I'm not gonna do it quite yet, okay? So let me get this open. And let's just get this thing cut out. And I'll probably use a little gilding wax, I guess. I was looking, I thought I had like a red one, but I don't. I only have, because Crafters Companion makes their own gilding wax. But um, again, real quickly, if you are using a pattern paper, you want the pattern to face up, face these cutting edges, even though the word Gemini is on the back of the folder, okay? You want your paper facing up. So this is the same on both sides, but I don't really care, but I am gonna just let you guys know that. And just in case you do have a pattern paper you're gonna cut out of. And so there it is. And this one should just be the two cutting plates. The last time I tried to run a cut and emboss folder through, um, that looks pretty already, through the uh, Gemini Junior here with two cutting plates, it did not want to take it. But let's see how thick this one is or what the problem might be. Or if it is, what I'm going to do is switch out to one cutting plate and just the plastic shim on top, okay? And no second cutting plate. Um, but let's try it, see what happens. Oh, it's going this time. So this is gonna come together pretty quick, guys. I know there's some measurements and numbers I have to give you, but okay, let's get this out of here. This is just cheap recollections paper. And so it's not my favorite. And maybe, to be honest, I could have maybe thrown in the metal shim, because I don't know if you can see on the top, it's not really that deep, which kind of bothers me. So maybe I'm gonna run it through again. And then you can save your little letters if that helps you do something later. I don't know what, you know, a pretty N, an E and an L. But, uh, or if you want to use it for something else. Hey, this one's not popping out, even though there's foam in there to help you pop out. Do not pick out that foam, but I'm gonna gently push that to the side. And I'm gonna run it through one more time. Again, really lining it up, because you don't want this to get messed up from what you just did. Uh, let's do that, and like I said, the metal shim. That's so funny, that last time it was too thick to go through. I had to go to a plastic shim and not the cutting plate, and this time it was too thin. Let's try it again. If that's no better, well, it doesn't matter because that's how I'm, we're, <laughs> we're gonna stick with it. Okay, that's much better. Really pretty, I can see that. Okay, so you can always, you know, try it again. Do what you gotta do to get these things to work. Um, you don't ever want to go too thick to begin with because it might just mess up your little machine. So let's put this thing to the side. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, what I'm going to do, put this to the side for now, is go ahead. I was going to do a little inking. So I'm going to ink this guy up. I'm going to ink up the little papers, even though they're really small. I'm just going to go around the edges. So I just have this Chinese red and... Is this the only red they have, guys? Because I was looking, I have all of their inks and I don't see anything else that's mm, red. <laughs> so if the color's quite off, well, you know, what can I do? That's what they have. 
So I'm just going to go around the edges very gently. There is some pink on this dauber thing, so that might also affect what we end up seeing here, but that's okay. And I'm just going around the edges just so slightly because I can only do so much on those little tab papers, so I don't want to put too much on this. I want it to kind of still coordinate with each other. And this is the water reactive ink because I like the way it blends. And that's all I'm doing there. And I'm gonna do the same thing for these little guys. Just take some of this. And this one I might just pick it up because they're so small. I'm just gonna come around the edge and just ink it up like this, okay? And I'll be right back once I've inked up both of the two little strips that I have. And then we'll get this guy one together. One last little thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put some uh, Pebeo on this thing. Uh, let me think, I have, this one's more Christmassy, you know, this brighter King Gold. This one's the Renaissance Gold. I don't know if you can see the difference. They're both very pretty, but let's use King Gold and see what that looks like. I can do a mixture of two of them too. See, this one came up, well, it was stuck on there really well. That last time I opened the other one, it was kind of already open, it was weird. Um, I do have some ink down here, but I don't think it's gonna make a difference. So this one, we have to be very gentle with it because it's brand new, so it's really juicy and really wants to be used. So I'm gonna tap, 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 tap a lot of that off. I don't know if you can see that, and I'll just keep tapping into there. And I'm basically just gonna run over like super lightly, wherever there is any of this embossing, right? You are gonna get a little bit over, you know, just on the paper. But I guess if you are very delicate with it, you probably wouldn't even get any extra on the paper if you don't want to. And then we have this beautiful little ornament here. So that's really what we wanna highlight. And again, after you're done, if you wanna take like a, a little piece of paper or fabric, or even a paper towel, you can rub, 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 rub into it and it'll just shine it up and it looks just that much shinier. I'm going to go over these little areas again just to bring those out. And I don't think there's anything around the letters. Yeah, so the letters are just what they are. So I'm just going to kind of rub it in so it looks nice and uniform, even on these other edges, maybe a little more. And like I said, you can come in with like that Renaissance gold and mix that in there too if you wanted. This is stuff is so funny because there's so little on here and um, it just really works, you know? Like whatever is left on my hair, I feel like I should rub it off and put it back in the pot, but then my finger is gonna get more gold on it, so what's the point? But there we go. You can give a little halo look, okay. So that's all I'm doing with that. I am going to clean off my surface, clean my finger, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna put this topper to the side put these little pieces to the side for right now. So what we're gonna do is focus on this front part of the card and again, you're gonna fold the edges. So we're gonna fold this back and then this one forward. And we're gonna do the same thing on both sides. So back and then forward. And if you want to distress this too, cause it's very stark white, you know, go ahead. I'm just leaving it the way it is, but that's that. I guess we didn't have to do those folds quite yet, but I did them already. And then I'm gonna glue this part down. Okay, so when I glue that part down, you can use a tape runner, you can use whatever glue. I'm just going to run around the, as close to the edge, well, not super close to the edge, but I'm gonna cut out that center part. Basically, we need to cut out, if you were looking through this, look how pretty it looks just with the little words, just a little behind it. If you're looking through this, basically we need this area cut out, right? Oot. So you can see through to the, the red in the back. So now I do want to make mention that this cutting folder is oriented this way, right? So when you cut, if your design was also in this direction, you could have just used the folder to cut through everything, right? Cause you can put your paper, you can put the folder on there, cut everything if it was all oriented the long ways, but it's not, this is a landscape folder. So that's what we have to do a little, a little something different. Okay. So I'm just going to, Put some glue really at this very bottom edge and then we can be more free at this top side because we really just need to cut out that. So there's gonna be a bottom area that we need to cut into. And I'm using a wet glue to help me position it as I'm looking at this. Okay. And I'm gonna give it a little moment to rest to kind of dry a little bit. So I'm gonna put this to the side. And we can work on the back piece, which again is the same thing, except for this time we're gonna fold that second line forward and then the, sec the first one back because it wants to meet up with what you have over there, right? And this guy's just gonna go in the center and hopefully 
I was gonna say, sometimes when you cut something that's exactly the size of something that you're gonna stick it down to, you might wanna shave off a little piece of this just so that it fits in there nicer. But I think I'm okay. And you can bone fold these things. I'm just kind of getting it done. But so we're just gonna put that down. This is Call All Glue from Crafts and Companion website. Um, I'm not sure if it's sold other places. Somebody said it's a French brand, so I don't know, but that's where I pick it up. I always pick it up on Crafters Companion. You guys are so crafty. You guys, I'm telling you, I learned so much from you guys. People that they are like, oh, you can get that here, or you can get that there, or you can go to, you know, um, all these different websites. So I'm like, you guys are awesome. Thank you, because um, I do like shopping, and I do like a deal, and I do like looking for different places uh, to get a good deal. A lot of people are saying sign up through Rakuten and get yourself some money back. I've never did that before. Um... And maybe I should, because like I said, I'm always shopping, but I just want to see something real quick. So cute. Okay. So, not that this is dry yet, and I'm not looking for it to dry, but I am looking to cut this. So I want to put this on here and kind of see where it is that I need to cut. And know not to cut outside those areas. So I want to cut within... I'm just going to pencil that down, like here to here, maybe. Right? And then... So I'm cutting inside of these marks that I'm making. That, that's just a guideline for me not to cut too far out. So I'm gonna cut inside that. Um, now where is my ruler I just had? Here it is. And I'm going to fussy cut this, you guys. So if you feel like this is too much you know, work, you know, that's up to you, but um, I think it'll be fine. So let me get my craft knife. And again, this is how high I want to cut, but I also want to cut inside of that line that I just made, but only a little bit in because um, it doesn't have to be straight or anything. Because these are almost to the edge, right? It's almost to the very edge. So um, let's see, like just right inside those lines that I made and then just right inside this backside over here. So hopefully you can see I cut through both papers. Again, just right inside, basically wherever I, I finish cutting. So right here, to no down to as far as I need it to be open. So hopefully you can see that. And it's kind of a bummer. I wish I could have just cut through all of it, but I was like, oh, I have to landscape this thing, so it's going to be different. So there's that. And I'll do the same thing on this side, just inside those pencil marks that I made. And just as low as I kind of eyeballed it. This one's a little bit harder because I'm scared, so I'm <laughs> like not cutting as through as I should. Okay, there's that. And one more. From here to wherever I finish cutting right there. Well, like I said, it doesn't have to be like the straightest because you're not gonna see that part really. And now you, you know, you have this little paper. I guess you could reuse that some for something else. Now let's see if that was cut open enough to work. And if not, I will have to do it again. But I think we're good. Oh, that's like perfect, you guys. Check that out. Almost perfect. Ooh, that worked out. Okay, so let me erase these, even though they're kind of faint. And if you want to pop dot this up, you know, go ahead. If you want to use a dimensional. I'm kind of debating that because I'm like, well, if it's up here... Maybe you're gonna see that spacing inside, you know what I'm saying? So I'd rather just kind of stick it down, but you know, we can make it dimensional other ways. We can add some dimensional uh, flowers or something cute. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down now. You can always stick the other part down. Oh, why am I putting glue right there? Silly girl. I need to put glue on the very edges, but not like, not too far in. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a whole aperture right there. And let me remove some of that. I'm going to let this dry anyway. It was basically what I was saying because I'm going to stick this down. Wet glue to help me position it better. We could have put more gold around the edges. Whatever you want to do, obviously, to decorate your paper. Let me see here. It's nice and straight, hopefully. It doesn't look straight, but at the same time, the paper is straight, so I'm like, Ew. I don't know. Let me go up a little bit higher. So I'm going to let this dry. That's pretty good, no? 
I think that's okay. And like I feel like that little bit of glue, remember I told you I left it there. Oh, looking nice and straight from the back too. Okay, perfect. So while this is dry, I'm gonna glue it together and then I'm gonna put the strips on because I don't really wanna mess with the strips um, before I stick them down. I, I don't know why, I just like to put this down and then glue the other one on top of it, you know? So let's come back in a couple minutes and we'll get this all finished up. Okay, really I was just waiting for that little over glue to finish drying so I wouldn't stick these together when I don't want them. Ooh, got a bunch of stuff, a little avalanche here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is stick this guy to this guy. Look how pretty that is when it's flat or even when it's gonna be opened up, I love it. Okay, this is a big card, guys. <laughs> so I, like I said, we're probably gonna have to add some more adhesives or not adhesive, dimensionals. Um, I have this dot runner. I don't really want to use this, but that's all I can find right now. I don't know why. Uh, I'd rather use like a solid liner, but, uh, runner. But I'm gonna stick this down here. And people were interested in, like, this one has a blue tone to it. And this is, uh, Tombow. Mono. So I'm just putting quite a bit. And then we're just gonna line up those two edges. And stick that together. Hopefully nice and straight. And I really, really want to stick that down, so, especially with this dot runner, I'd rather, like I said, use a solid one. Okay, and same thing on the other side. Oopsie. Oh, the paper I used, just so you guys know, is, um, I was trying to use the Carthage Companion stamping paper, but it wasn't big enough. So this is, um, Close to My Heart White Daisy, I believe is the white, the name of the white paper. It's a really good paper. Obviously, they have great paper, so... Gonna stick that down too. Oh, you guys, this is so cute. It's very, very dimensional. If you want it l less boxy, you know, less dimensional, you can, you don't have to have a whole inch right here. You can do maybe half an inch. So you would score at one inch, score at one and a half, and then this will be a smaller space here. So when you push it open, I have a two inch space, right? Cause it's one inch and one inch, but you don't have to have it that far. But look how pretty. Oh, I love it. It's really big. Okay. And then again, you can decorate both panels or just one side. So I'm just gonna take some wet glue, which I probably should use a, a runner just to get it done, but that's okay. And I'm gonna stick these down on both sides. And then again, if you have any pretty little flowers or leaves or whatever you wanna put on here, obviously, um, dimensional is always pretty. Add some more dimension stuff out on the outside, but I think it has a lot going on already. So we're gonna stick that down and then we're gonna stick down one of these guys on top. And what do you guys think of this paper? I don't know, it just seemed very Christmassy to me with the little red um, and the little strips that I got cut here. It doesn't have a lot of the red flowers in it, so it's kind of like, okay, maybe maybe I'm missing the mark there. But there's red flowers in the background paper right there soon. And the flowers do kind of have a, uh, a direction. That's what's interesting about this paper. They're kind of going like that way. So, or at least I feel like. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, I waited a few minutes just to kind of let the glue dry a little bit more. Um, let me close this up. I'm running out of this glue. I'm almost done. I never get to the bottom of a bottle of glue. I'm not kidding. And I, my other favorite glue was also from, oh, well, not also from, was from Close to My Heart. Um, they're glazed and I can't remember what it's called right now because it dries really fast. It, it's lovely, I love it. But um, anyway, so here we are. That's it. What do you guys think? I think that's really cute. Maybe I should have done some distressing on the white. I don't know, I kind of like the crispness of the white with the crisp of the black, but basically we are, when this is super dry, is you're gonna push this in, right? So those little tabs go in. And I'm scared, but there we go. <laughs> I'm so scared to do that. Okay. And I probably should have given it a nice bone folding before I did all this other stuff, but you can do that. You can put it together, um, put your papers on top or however you like, but give it a nice bone fold, okay? So that the thing is done right. And look at that. I think that's lovely. I like seeing all the way through it. Like I told you guys, this sparkle paper, I don't know if you can see, is not super duper sparkly. I don't know how I get this to focus on this. But you can barely even tell it's glitter paper, but some of the other glitters are super sparkly. So it just it so happened. It cut really nicely. That's the other thing I want to mention about this paper because I know it says it's new. Um, I don't know how new it is because they have other glitter papers. You know what? I'm gonna say the glitter papers that come in the packs, um, I wish I had one here to show you. Like whenever you buy a line of their papers and they come in that nice pack, right? And it has like three different colors. It's thicker. I think it's a thicker paper. I feel like the back of it is thicker. This paper is a little bit thinner. It's not flimsy by any means. Uh, maybe I should, let me get a piece just to show you. 
And of course, I don't know where. Oh, like this. Um. You buy their packs that come in kits like this, like vintage lace, okay? This is pearlescent paper, but it's really thick stuff. And almost sometimes when you cut it, it can crack. So you have to really make sure you're kind of conditioning it. But this is the paper I just used. And it's just, it's a little bit thinner, but it's still cardstock. I mean, it's still thick. Look, I mean, obviously you saw it. But I feel like it's a little bit thinner than the other paper. So it's really nice, cuts really nicely. Um, I just, you obviously you only cut straight lines this time, but it cut like perfect, nothing shed. There's no... You know, nothing of the glitter coming off the edges, you know, where I cut or anything like that. It's just really nice. So I hope that gives you an idea of some of the different products that they use or have. I might add a little more gilding wax over here. It looks like I missed a spot. But um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that gives you an idea of how to use these because basically it's its own card. I mean, you can maybe add, like I said, some little flower or something cute, uh, dimensional stuff here and there. But it's its own thing. So I think you, you can have fun with the card base with this kind of a, a deal. So I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.